Irish, they were missionaries to Northeast. From my own family circle, Bishop Mama of uh, Thura Isis, Thomas Machir, it's from my family circle, and then many, and on the first declaration missionary, the pioneer of uh, Mapilla Barambil, is uh, also from my village. We are family friends and uh, my elder brother, like you know, even before joining the traditions. So <clears throat> I'm personally very happy to be present uh, during uh, for this chapter. Seeing this uh, mission services of my brothers in about 20 different places, I feel proud and I thank God for that. Through many ups and downs, difficulties behind, certainly there are challenges. But I want to highlight one thing. Behind them, you are there. And I am moved personally by this gesture of communion that you express by being present at this inauguration. Normally, when a chapter is inaugurated, a chapter begins, we, this doesn't happen. This is a, a rare event, but I think it is very significant. Significant for our times. Last December, uh, no, last November, there was an extraordinary event at the religious level uh, that happened in uh, Rome. The religious superiors of the men and women came together for uh, four days or so of uh, time together, first time. And then together we had a meeting with Pope Francis. And in that meeting, he started you know, sharing the importance of this. And one thing he said, do not cage the Holy Spirit. Do not cage the Holy Spirit. And then he spoke of the synodal journey, where we walk together. And the word more, for me very touching is, weave together. Weave it together what the Lord wants of us in the church and in the world. And you being together to support, to express solidarity and communion with my brothers is a visible expression of what Pope was trying to tell us. We walk together, we, together, all the religious in the garden of the church, the beautiful flowers, and when the world is getting polarized and uh, pitting one against the other, this is a beautiful testimony that differences are beautiful and they do not cause divert, division but unity. Unity and diversity, which I think the cultural varieties and oh, some of that we have seen here expresses in this were uh, expressed in Northeast. During this chapter, I wish that you know, we together uh, ask the Lord what, what the Lord wants of us, of our presence in this region, together with you, with all other, you know, with the whole church. We do not want to walk alone, alone. We want to walk together. And this is being affirmed in the synodal journey which Pope Francis is asking, though some people misunderstand the whole thing about the synodal journey. We are living in a time of big changes, all of you know that, both in the society and in, this, in the church. Some of them are progress and some of them are not. And we also have the challenges our own country is also going through a particular phase which also caused concern for the fabrics of India. And in this context, the church also goes through its own challenges. The change in the vocational scenario and uh, the challenge of facing abuses, clericalism, mundanism, Many, many viruses that eat up the vitality of ours. This is why we, I believe the Pope is calling us to go back to the origins, to the spirit of the Gospels. 
and congregations back to the original foundational spirit. For us, it's 175 years of the foundation. During that time, the, when the founder was once interviewed, you know, how can you do so much things in a short span? What is your secret? You know? A group of college students asked him in Barcelona. And then he said that, fall in love with Jesus Christ and you will do greater things. We have in our own journey, our own struggles and trials, we wanted to recapture that spirit in our times, especially in the midst of the challenges we face in the world. And the last chapter invited us to be rooted in Christ and in this charism and be audacious in mission. This audacity in mission is, I think, very much in our, in our DNA. I'm glad that my brothers are called border, border security fathers, the first fathers, the border security missionaries. That is, that's wonderful. I think it's a privilege to know this kind of names, you know, rather than being you know, any other names which sometimes you know, we people give to missionaries. This journey now is one of uh, weaving together communion. Communion within us, because it's a challenge. We, perhaps sometimes the temptation of missionaries to have solitary one man fight, or congregations to be also a collective ego trip, we would say, than joining hands with. And that means placing Christ at the center. And so weaving together what God wants in our times. So this is why I think that the uh, Synod has placed communion as the first one. And it's a challenge in a broken world. Only when the Spirit is at the center, we will be weaved to do something together with the Bishop in the local churches, with the Pope at the universal churches. So weaving, and maybe like orchestra, everyone playing his his part, but the same music, the music of love in the world. A second aspect is the idea of mission. We do not have a tradition mission here. There's only one mission, the mission of Christ. I like when the Pope says, you are the mission. Now we are born with a purpose. Each one of us is a parable of God's love. A unique version of Jesus' love in the world. And uh, unless we see this mission, Jesus' mission at the center, and we are all participating in His mission with our congregational charism and our personal charism, we cannot make Christ known and loved and proclaim what He wants, His dream for humanity which He named Kingdom of God. And the third element which is highlighted by the Senior is participation. We have been tired of hearing the abuses, abuses among the uh, abuses in the circles and the propensity of a spiritual leadership falling out of what God wants of us. How can we have a participative journey where everyone's vocation is respected and nobody is marginalized? We need priests, decision, religious, brothers, sisters, lay people. And a participative journey needs again certain um, shift, paradigm shift in the way we conceive the church. And this is also a challenge. You know, then leadership is not bossing over, but weaving together, hosting these differences so that we can sing the same song, we can journey towards the same direction. And I personally believe our journey these days, seeking the light of the Lord, accompanied by you and your prayers, will also help us to discern and discover what the Lord, what the Lord wants of us in this part of our Indian, our country and the church. I want to thank my brothers, 
the dear congregation, Father Richard, and the superior rector, and all of you provincials, and all of, all of you have come here. It gives us a new hope. We are not alone. We walk together. And this art of walking together, we learn from the heart of the Blessed Virgin. A heart that is capable of a tender love. Only love and heart unites. Mind and ideas divides. We need to return, I think, to this sanctuary, the heart of God, so that we can really care for one another. Care for one, each other's con each congregation. We have received, I think, as a, as a gift from God, the evangelizing of evangelists. In India, we have started sannyasa in order to support consecrated life. We cannot do it alone. Naturally, various religions together need to, to encourage and empower each other through programs. The same way, other aspects of life, be it youth, education, pastoral areas, solitary journey will not help us. Today is the time to walk together. So we seek the Lord's guidance and never cage the Holy Spirit, but have a free range, free reign for the Holy Spirit in us and He makes us. Thank you very much. God bless you all and uh, continue to accompany us through your prayers. God bless you all. Thank you, Father Superior General, for lending us your words of appreciation.